I was trying to think today, what is it about Weezer, what is it about your music, Rivers, that gets to me? And, and I will say it is incredibly um, unique. Like it is, there's no one else. I just keep listening to the riffs, I keep listening to the construction of the song, and it just never sounds like anybody else. And I mean that in the most complimentary way. It's just, I always know it's you when mm. the song starts, and it's just fantastic. And I don't know, so I guess part of where I wanted to start was figuring out where that comes from, your approach to music, because you have such a unique individualistic approach to it when you were a kid, what were you listening to? All right, I'm, I'm actually thinking of the sweater song now because um, you just mentioned it, but mm -hmm. I remember the moment I came up with that riff. Yeah. And <clears throat> I had, I was about 20, 21 years old, and I had been exposed to cool music finally after moving to LA from Connecticut. Got a job at Tower Records and started listening to Sonic Youth and Pixies and Velvet Underground. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to write a Velvet Underground song. And I sat down and came up with the, the sweater song riff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, this is so cool. And, you know, a couple years went by, we got signed, put out a record, it blew up, very happy. 1995, we, we ended up uh, playing this big festival in New York City and Lars Ulrich was there from Metallica <sighs> and I saw him backstage. Yeah, And it, the truth was, I was a huge metal Head in, sure. in, in high school, and that's really how I learned how to play my instrument. It suddenly occurred to me, like, the sweater song, that riff, that's actually very similar to Metallica's Sanitarium. <laughs> and <laughs> if, you, if you play them next to each other, they're, they're pretty much identical. Just one <laughs> sweater song's in a major key. <laughs> so I, I had to tell him that right then and there. That's what I told him when I and met him. And how did Lars take it? He's totally cool. Um, uh, we, we just ran into him again. Yeah, he's, he's uh, just, just very, very cool. And because uh, recently we, we covered uh, Enter Sandman and mm -hmm. it's been in our set recently and we, we ended up playing with him this summer and we were so close to, to playing Enter Sandman right before they went on. And uh, but when we asked him, like, hey, is it cool if we play it? And he said, yeah, that would mean we don't have to play it. <laughs> <laughs> so did you play it? No, we didn't. We chickened out. Oh, man. That would have been amazing. <laughs> it would have. What would the crowd have done? I guess they, I mean, it would That's be. That's the question. Yes. <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> well, Metallica would have to play the sweater song. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd, I'd pay to see that, I too. too. I, uh, it reminds me of, I know a comedian who's also a musician uh, is a really brilliant guy named Andy Breckman, who's written for Saturday Night Live and a million other things. And um, he famously opened for Don McLean once at a festival. And what he did, oh, he, no. he played American Pie <laughs> and did the whole thing. And Don McLean was not happy. <laughs> That just kills me. <laughs> that just kills me. But yeah, I mean, Metallica could handle it because they've got a million songs, you know? Not so Don McLean. Sorry, Don. Uh, well, he's got the Van Gogh song. He's and, listening. Yeah. Oh, trust me. Avid fan. Avid fan. 